how do you define belief? Now the belief, I am giving you my definitions, there is no standard definition, there is no Webster definition, anything. I am telling you the definition with which I function. Belief is subjective truth, your truth and my truth. There are about 150 people in this room, there are 150 beliefs in this room. So when I am doing business with you, what should I pay attention to? Should I focus on my belief, should I focus on your belief or do we both focus on some belief out there which we both agree upon or don't agree upon or we believe is more important than my belief and your belief. That is the premise where I come from. So kiska, what is this belief? Now I will use another word for belief, another word for me belief is myth. Now that disturbs people because when you say myth, it means falsehood. For most traditional definition, this is an old definition but nobody uses it anymore in an academic sense. Myth is again means subjective truth, your truth and my truth. So that is where we come from, personal truths. I will give a better word for belief or rather my favorite word. Uh, the best word I have for belief is assumption. What is the assumption with which you function in at work? What are the assumptions? If I work hard, I will be promoted. Truth or myth? That is belief. Whatever you believe is shaping your decision making. Whatever you believe is shaping your decision. So you have a business plan. At the beginning of the business plan, you have a set of assumptions. That is belief. And just that is the easiest explanation I can give for belief. So does God exist? Assumption. Does God not exist? Assumption. Is that my phone by any chance? It's causing this. I think so. That's assumption. Does assumption matter? That's the question. It matters in a business plan. Change the assumptions, everything in the business plan is going to change. Your mind also has assumptions. The people in your team have assumptions. The person who is joining your team has assumptions, your investor has assumptions, your vendor has assumptions, your employees have assumptions, the market has assumptions, everybody functions with assumptions. When I use the word assumption, I am not talking about group assumptions, I am talking about individual assumptions. How do I look at assumptions? And that is the space of belief. So that is where I come from. So let us begin with. Um, I use this uh, image, I, I love using this image a lot at the beginning of my lectures. Um, this is Gomateshwar Bahubali from Karnataka. It is a gigantic stone statue. Every 12 years, this image is bathed with milk and water. If, I, if my assumption is that this is going to lead to tangible results, um, tangible material results, some people believe that if I do this ritual, there will be a transformation at a tangible level. Some people believe that this ritual has a psychological benefit. It talks about revitalization. So some people look at it from a tangible point of view. Some people look at it from a psychological point of view. Now is psychological tangible? The mind, the realm of the mind is extremely strange world. For me, that is the realm of belief, the psychological world. Does it matter in business? It matters. In negotiation, it matters. When I am talking, I am negotiating, when I am going for a job interview, when I am striking a deal, when I am dealing with a union worker, when I am dealing with regulators, psychology matters. So that is the space I like to go. This ritual is basically the Abhishek ritual. It is the ritual, if I look at it not literally, but I look at it symbolically. I realize it is talking to me, it is giving me, it is, it, it is communicating with me. 
literally people will argue it means nothing kya hai why are they wasting so much of resources on a stone statue it is absolutely of no value but the moment i look at it symbolically it starts communicating to me it says this is a ritual of revitalization the image is being re revitalized when was the last time i revitalized myself so we take a bath in the morning and we revitalize our bodies when was the last time you revitalized your mind so many of you all have come in mid course you stepped out of your routine careers and said let me go to this institution spend a year what are you doing you're revitalizing yourself you're rebooting yourself you are changing your assumptions new ideas new data new patterns are being shown to you every day i am a speaker who's bringing new pattern another pattern somebody will come tomorrow and give you new pattern there'll be patterns after patterns thrown at you you're rebooting yourself you're revitalizing this is what you're doing right now you're doing this to yourself i am pouring the milk because you have allowed me to do that you have allowed me to do that so i'm going to present ideas to you new ways of looking at the same thing question it challenge it think about it it will just something it will do to you now you know one of the biggest assumptions which i find in management is i mean not as management in every sphere of life uh is this obsession with rationality and objectivity and mathematics and numbers because we are a product of the scientific revolution we want everything to be objective so when somebody gets upset we'll say okay let's be rational about it let's be objective about it so just visualize the scenario appraisal period is over you expected the promotion and you didn't get it how many have been in that position you thought you would get it it was so sure and don't get it and you go and talk to your boss and he said let's be rational about it you want to slap him because your feelings you feel betrayed you feel cheated your self worth your self everything is going wrong and the company wants to retain you as talent and you are saying no and they'll say oh, and then the funny part comes you'll say i look around and suddenly the company calls your bluff and says ja ke dekhna market mein kya value hai tera and then it becomes very dark because the market is not accepting you and sheepishly you continue you rationalize the situation and that happens right that happens many a times in life we rationalize we call it compromise compromise is not a pleasant word but rationalize is a better word but dard hota it hurts because you've been measured and it's going to happen year after year after year and you're going to be measured constantly you're going to be measured with your peer groups you're going to be measured with your family friends you're going to be measured with your school friends if you've got the promotion you will go for the school reunion <laughs> this happens we are human we are going to do it because the assumptions the assumptions of our life one of the biggest problem i know i i always tell when somebody is in a race so i remember i was sitting with the hr head and we were talking and the gentleman walked in and left i said what's the problem he said no all his batchmates have become ceos usko dard ho raha hai that's the problem nothing else he's doing well in life career wise is good he has a good future but he is troubled now does this matter in business do these assumptions matter they do matter we are human beings and i like that assumption that humans are not rational creatures so the first question i'm going to deal with is let's dis let's look at the display of irrationality let's study it a little bit in detail this if you were invited for dinner a formal dinner by the queen of england or by the president of the united states in all probability this is how the meal would be served to you look at the cutlery you're you're in a formal you're dressed formally you go for this formal meal you sit there the vessels have been laid out in front of you each vessel is for a particular course so soup starter main course dessert you start with the outer instruments and you go to the inside instruments you will eat precisely what the chef has prepared for you you will taste that exactly at most you will be able to put a few things maybe some salt maybe some pepper maybe a little butter that's it but you will eat exactly what the chef has prepared for you this is how the meal will be designed right 
it is highly sequential, it is organized, it is systematic, it is served in a particular way, everything is served in a particular way, the way you move your spoon, everything is designed. Is this the rational way to eat is the question. Because rationally you will say that hey food has to be hygienic, food has to be nutritious, food has to be tasty, this universally we will agree upon. All over the world people say food has to be nutritious, food has to be hygienic, food has to be tasty. After these three questions are answered, you do not have a clear answer. How many times to eat, how to serve, because I will show you another way of serving food this way. Look at this meal, all things are served simultaneously, all things are served simultaneously and you will mix and match the food, which means one person will take the rice and add the dal. The second person will add achar or pickles on it. The third person will add maybe some papad, crispies on it. The fourth person will add maybe a little curd to it. The fifth person will add gulab jamun, sweet dish on it. Each one will mix the dish in different proportions and put it in the mouth and it will taste very different. So although all of us will be served the same meal, we will all taste different things. It is the ultimate in customization. Are you seeing how customized this is? So is it a standard meal or a customized meal? It is served standard but the experience is customized. Is this a more rational way to eat? Which is better? You have no answer. Rational answers will not work here. It is not rational anymore, it is cultural. Yet the probability of a CEO being served this meal is much less than this. No? Look at the difference. That difference is interesting. Sequential, cyclical, which is rational. So we decide. Let us decide. Let us figure out what is more rational. So we decide to call a gentleman from China. Let us have not a European, not an Indian. We will get a scholar from China. What is the answer he will give? This is the better way to eat. Because the rules are going to be different. He will say the assumptions change now. The assumptions are dramatically different. Because the Indian would argue that, you know, I mean, historically, this is only about 300 years old eating style. We will say that, you know, this has been going on for 3000 years. This is better. 3000 versus 300, right? Rational. You have given a benchmark. But here is China. We will say, hello, this is also 3000 years old. But it is bad manners to serve food to people which are not cut in fine chopped pieces. It is bad manners to leave a knife on the table for the guest to cut the food. It shows very that a host is not considerate. 